Dr. Veach has studied the chemical and electrical potential of the great controlling nucleotides, and by measuring them under fasted and well-fed states, as well as under ketogenic diet and in the presence of exogenous ketones, he showed that the great controlling nucleotide coenzymes themselves were regulated by beta-hydroxybutyrate. From this, he hypothesized that ketones would be effective in treating Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, traumatic brain injury, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, as well as offer protection from ionizing radiation. He basically said D-beta-hydroxybutyrate could treat all these diseases effectively. If you have a desire to know how this is possible, there are a few things you must understand if you want to follow what Dr. Veach is about to say. This quick video is meant to bring you up to speed on what are nucleotide coenzymes, how does one measure their chemical or electrical potential, and what does knowing their potential tell you about the metabolism of the cell. In other words, if these are the great controlling nucleotides, what is it they control and what controls the great controlling nucleotides? We should all be familiar with the basic idea of a nucleotide. They are the building blocks of DNA and RNA. They consist of a nitrogenous base of five carbon sugar, either ribose in RNA or deoxyribose in DNA, and a phosphate. You may not be as familiar with the nucleotide's role as coenzymes. Adenosine monophosphate is a nucleotide used to make RNA. By adding two more phosphates, we have ATP. ATP is a nucleotide coenzyme in the sodium-potassium ATP pump. It is a nucleotide coenzyme in the reaction with actin and myosin to make muscles contract. NAD is another nucleotide coenzyme. If we start with AMP and add a second nucleotide made with the vitamin B3 niacin as the nitrogenous base, we get NAD. If we start with ADP, add a phosphate, add a pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5, and an amino acid, cysteine, we get coenzyme A. ATP, NAD, and coenzyme A form the foundation of the great controlling nucleotides. These coenzymes are modified when they participate in reactions. ATP donates a phosphate to become ADP. Coenzyme A transfers an acyl group, leaving behind a thiol. The acyl group could be acetyl, succinyl, hydroxymethylglutarate, or malonyl. NADH transfers a hydride ion, leaving behind NAD+. The relative concentrations of the two forms of each coenzyme determines their chemical potential, or delta G, or their electrical potential in the case of NADH and NADPH. These nucleotide coenzymes are reused by many enzymes. For instance, if you look up human proteins that use NADPH in a protein database, you get over 500 entries back. If you know the chemical or electrical potential of these nucleotides in one reaction, you know the control they exert in all the other reactions because the chemical or electrical potential is the same for all reactions that share these nucleotides as coenzymes. For example, NADPH is the cell's battery. It ultimately provides electrons to every reaction that uses electrons. The chemical potential or Gibbs free energy of ATP over ADP and phosphate tells you the body's horsepower. How much work can it do? HMG-CoA controls cholesterol synthesis. This is the target of statins. Malonyl-CoA controls fat synthesis. There are a few others such as mitochondrial NADH and acetyl-CoA and succinyl-CoA that control the Krebs cycle, or cytosolic NADH, which sets the steady state concentrations of pyruvate and lactic acid. If you know these, one can predict an awful lot about what goes on in the cell. Veach has measured in vivo the voltage of NADPH, the cell's battery, or the Gibbs free energy of ATP, the body's horsepower, and the Gibbs free energy of the CoA enzymes that control fat and cholesterol. The problem Dr. Veach faced was that you can't measure any of these values directly in a living organism. Each chemical or electrical potential measurement was a unique problem. 
You must stop all the reactions instantly by freezing tissue in an aluminum clamp about the size of bolt cutters that have been dipped in liquid nitrogen. Then you treat the freeze clamped tissue with perchloric acid which denatures the enzymes. Then you measure concentrations of metabolites. After doing this, the math begins. It goes beyond just Gibbs and Nernst. Much of the math was taken from work by Alberti, a professor of physical chemistry at MIT, who worked with Henry Lardy at Wisconsin. Of all the in vivo potentials of the great controlling nucleotides, there is one that is far more difficult to measure. This is the Gibbs free energy of ATP. This ultimate achievement of physical chemistry and understanding bioenergetics the measure of Gibbs free energy in ATP in vivo in a beating heart is most fully explained in this paper related to alcoholism. An important step in the measurement of Gibbs free energy of ATP was to calculate the free magnesium in the cytosol. Dr. Veach is very proud that the theoretical and measured values align so precisely. You now know what the great controlling nucleotides are, how their chemical or electrical potential is measured, and that these potentials can be modified by manipulating D-beta-hydroxybutyrate.